In the winter of 1943, newly qualified ship signaler Ralph McClure joined his brand new landing craft, LCT-952, for intensive training off the Scottish coast. We were going round the west of Scotland, mainly, staying at different locks and going to different beaches and loading up tanks and that. Yeah. Just training on different beaches Just, for the landing, yeah. <laughs> getting ready. All around the British coast, craft of all sizes was secretly training to be part of the biggest invasion fleet assembled in all history. A vast number of vessels of all different shapes and sizes took part. With 7,000 ships were eventually involved in the overall operation. Nearly 4,000 of those were landing craft, the ships that would deliver troops and their equipment directly onto the Normandy beaches. One of the most numerous types of landing craft is the landing craft tank, the type that Ralph sailed across on. Over 800 landing craft tank, or LCTs, were used on D-Day. But this one, 7074, is the only surviving example. Wow. It's huge. It carried a few. Are you excited to get on board? I am, yes. Oh. <laughs> I've never seen you this excited. Let's do it. Come on. After the war, this ship became a nightclub in Liverpool, but later fell into disrepair and sank. In 2014, she was salvaged, then restored. Here we go. And is now on display at Portsmouth D-Day Story Museum. Wow, Grandad, look at that. That's a wind shaft. This is the first time Ralph's been back on an LCT since 1944. One minute you're at home making yeah. a cup of tea for Nanar well, June, and now you're on board and, you know, another ship. <laughs> I've, run, I've run up and down a time or two. A landing craft tank is, is one of the largest types of landing craft that were built by the Allies in the Second World War. It's essentially a large flat-bottomed vessel that's designed to be able to get onto a beach and deposit vehicles directly onto the shore. They have a cargo capacity of some 130 tons, have a speed of 10 and a half knots and an endurance of 1,000 miles. You see how long it is? And going into the beaches, we carried eight tanks. Yeah. Sherman's. Yes. They're seaworthy craft, but the accommodation for personnel is distinctly poor. The landing craft tank wasn't in any way a joy to sail. The flat bottom and the lack of a keel meant that they're constantly uh, pitching and rolling in rough seas. Even their best sailors, who had spent years at sea, were still being violently sick. Ralph's role as ship signaler meant he was responsible for all communications using semaphore, Morse code lamps, and signal flags. Up there, Grandad, is that where you'd have been? Up on I, the bridge? I would be at the bridge, yes. Yeah. I can show you. You and what? You want to get up tell, there? Tell you what happened. Well, <laughs> I can tell I'm you. I'm not getting you up there. Tell you what happened, can't you? <laughs> when we get Come up on. there. <laughs> Grandad. Fortunately, Using a pair of walkie-talkies and a TV, Ralph can give Vicky a full guided tour without going up anywhere. Sailor, 952, is that you? Do you Roger? Well, that's the plan. You just go through the door and... Uh... Press your button, Grandad. Oh, yes. Follow me up here, Grandad. Does this feel familiar here? Yes, that's like our quarters. Rough, but... Yeah. Rough. Yeah, rough but enough, that's a great <laughs> saying. There'd been very little thought given to accommodating the crew on these small vessels, the primary purpose of it being the tank deck. So they managed to squeeze them into a little bit of space just behind the engine room, uh, which was, of course, very cramped, very damp and very noisy. Right, I'm going up, Grandad. Give us a wave. Yeah, well, you're there on the bridge. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> When at sea, it would be the skipper there, the first lieutenant. I'd be there as a signalman. There was no BT, whatever you call it, on those days. You had to do it by flags and signals. 
got you, Roger that. Are these the flags that you would have been using to signal? Yes, different flags for uh, different manoeuvres. Wow. There's some big guns here. The gun either side or early guns. Ehrlichans were 20mm anti-aircraft cannons, and an LCT usually had two of them. Did you ever operate them? I did when we uh, encountered a German e-boat. Right, I'm heading downstairs, Grandad, to a different deck. I'm going in this little doorway. Oh, I found the wheel to the ship, Grandad. Oh, have you got the wheel, ass? I've got the wheel, ass. That would be the coxswain that would be at the wheel. This is like a weird version of uh, Crystal Maze and Challenge Annika, all sort of mashed into one. I'm at a little bedroom now. Oh, well, I've got a skipper's quarters. Yeah, it's nice. It's got a comfy bed. They didn't sleep in that much like we did. It does look like there's a few more stars on this room. I'm just stood here and it's absolutely taking my breath away at how big it is and how high it is and just the thought of this being in the sea under gunfire, just incredible bravery of you and all of those with you on the ship. Just doing a job, won't we? Just doing a job, Grandad. I mean, just doing a job. Does it feel strange that you've been back on the ship at Ooh. 97 years old? Oh, crikey. Can you believe it? Don't it? No, can't.